everyone, and welcome back to the Dream Life Loading Podcast, Season 2, Episode 21. And today, I am your host, Sky. So Susan is really not feeling well this week, and I wanted to still be able to get on here and do an episode for you guys. And Susan will be back next week. But in the meantime, this is just going to be a little solo Skylar episode. Um, I have never done something like this before, so bear with me, and I would love any feedback if you hated this style episode definitely let us know because we won't do it again um if you liked this style episode also let us know because then we'll i would love if this goes well to start incorporating some more solo episodes from both me and susan into the rotation i think also having some guests in the rotation would be awesome so if you think you're somebody that would be a good guest for dream life loading let me know let us know and We'd love to make it happen. We're looking to expand and grow the podcast and expand our audiences and just do what we can to make this beneficial for you guys, make it a fun listen. Um, So yeah, let's see how this goes today. I am very nervous. I'll be transparent, but I thought it would just be nice. I, I know both Susan and I have a lot of similarities in our values and a lot of and what we do in our lives and things like that but i know we also have a lot of differences in lifestyles whereas susan especially on her TikTok and her brand is very much focused right now on motherhood and becoming a mother and home buying and all of like those experiences that she's going through but then on the flip side I am, my brand is definitely more focused on living abroad and the hockey life and like all of those changes and kind of like that lifestyle. So it works together a lot of the time, but I think we both thought that it would be really beneficial to kind of dive in separately to each of our lifestyles and kind of just give you a more in-depth look at our lives and how how things go about. Um, So I have my vanilla or caramel oat milk ice latte here. And um, let's just chat. I want, so I think if this is your first time tuning in, hi, I'm Skye. We run, I run Dream Life Loading with one of my best friends, Susan Ash. And we started Dream Life Loading in November of 2022. Um, and the brand is really just about inspiring and motivating people to live their dream lives. And so it's a very much a self help, self motivation brand. We have an Etsy shop where you can shop a lot of our digital products. And obviously we have the podcast here, we have a TikTok, So we're just all about motivating you to be your best self. And it, the brand started from Susan and I's friendship that it, it is and was very much created um and maintained from us really motivating each other like we we started going to the gym together we so just a like susan and i's friendship was always centered around wanting to help each other be the best that we can so we kind of took that friendship and expanded it into a brand that is now dream life loading today so anyways that's dream life loading and then for me um i'm sky i'm 24 i graduated college in may of 2022 and i went to school to be a wedding planner um, or less specifically just an event planner in general i have a background in journalism a little bit i did a lot of journalism and writing in high school and then i have a journalism minor from college so i love writing i love reading i love that side of things um and i really got into interviewing and podcasting actually in high school i had my first podcast that i did through the high school's magazine that I loved called Voice of the River. Um, And so I think a lot of that passion is still continuing today with doing the podcast here. I love interviewing people. I love getting to know people. And my favorite pieces to write were feature pieces. Just I loved profiles on people that became like my niche. Um, So I love that side of things. And then the other side is the event planner side. I am obsessed with weddings. I always have been. I am a very planner type A person. So I really, really loved that major in college. And I did an intern, a few different internships and jobs working in weddings specifically. That was always what I was most passionate about. So when I ended up moving to Italy, obviously I had to do a little bit of a career shift. I wouldn't say that 
I wouldn't say it was a, I mean, I guess for the moment it's a career change, but I think um, I am a strong believer that everything happens for a reason. So I think it's so entirely possible that one day I will go back to that and be a wedding planner. But I also think that all the skills I learned in college help me today, whether that's like career wise or just in life. I think there's so many practical skills and confidence that you learn from college and gain from college. So, yeah. So I met Nick, who is my now fiance, um, in January of 2021. Um, we met through a mutual friend and we were kind of together ever since that first time we met. Um, and I guess we started officially dating in March, if that matters. But um, yeah, so Nick was one year ahead of me in school. So we dated throughout the rest of his senior year. And then he graduated, moved back home to Canada for the summer, and then actually moved to Italy to start his um, or continue his hockey career. He had done hockey throughout all of his years and then played in college and then went to Italy to play pro. So we did a full year of long distance, which I definitely have a lot of advice and tips and everything on how to not only maintain a relationship long distance, but allow your relationship to continue to grow even when you're so apart. Um, and like, it wasn't just that we were long distance, like we had a six hour time difference between us. So makes a really big difference, um, especially with me being in college. Like it was just, it was not easy, but um, I wouldn't change it for the world because I think it really allowed us to strengthen our relationship in ways that we would not have had the opportunity to do if we were in the same place. So yeah, if you're interested in long distance and like advice and tips and stuff, I would love to maybe do a solo episode um, about all of that. But anyway, so I finished college. I graduated um, a year later in May of 2022, like I said. And then by that point, I think, not I think, all of my senior year, it was my plan to move to Italy and be with Nick. That was like, we knew. I think one of the biggest things that helped us with long distance was knowing that after I graduated, I would be moving there with him. Like there was always the end goal to long distance, which made it so much easier in a way because we had something to look forward to and i was able to visit for um over a month during my senior year visit him in italy and we got to live together and although it was only a month when you're living with your person and not just there for vacation but you're there for long enough to really experience what life with them would be like it really helped us to realize like okay not only can we do this but we really want to do this and we want to live together and have this phase of life and do this do it together so um we did that and then i moved to italy in october of 2022 and it i think i'm i'm very grateful that nick was already somewhat established here because when i moved it wasn't like we were both fish out of water um he was able to really help me with that transition and i will say like by far without question the hardest part was leaving my family and friends i am so close with my friends and family and i honestly can never would never have guessed that i would be the one to move this far i i went to college in the same town that i grew up in like i was always somebody that was home a lot i love my family i love my friends um so it's just crazy what life throws at you and what ends up happening um but i would not change it i i it's so funny to say because i wish that i could be with my friends and family and i miss them so much but I think it's so important for me as an individual and also for Nick and I as a couple to have this time where it really is just us in so many ways. And we've had to like kind of bond together and like figure it out. And my parents both talk a lot to me about when before I was born, they lived in um, Texas together, which actually where I was end up being born. Um, but obviously Texas is still the same country, but you're moving so far, you're moving away from friends and family. And it is so similar to Nick and I's situation in the sense of it was just them and they had holidays where it was just the two of them and you have to figure it out together. You can't like run home if something goes wrong, you know, like you really have, like we've grown so much over our time being here in Italy together. So I really am grateful for it. And I look forward to the day where we can be back in North America with our friends and family. Um, but yeah, I will, I, I wrote down, I, I did take notes here. I wanted to try and stay somewhat on topic. I wrote down what was hard. Um, and I would say what was hard was being away from friends and family. Like you feel like there's a piece of you missing. And I think 
it, it's okay to acknowledge that. I think with living abroad, if you can't acknowledge that you miss your friends and family and you're like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. And you kind of push it under, like that's when you're gonna get into trouble. But I think if you can acknowledge like, yeah, I miss my family every single day that I'm here, but that that doesn't mean I'm not happy here. You know, like the two can work together. Um, and I'm so grateful to have Nick here. Obviously I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Nick, but you understand um, that you create you, you make it work. Um, and I'm so grateful for this experience. And I know that one day we'll be back with my family and I I'll talk about it a little later about how I work so hard to stay in contact with, um, friends and family. And I think the biggest transitions from, and I think I wanted to, I wanted to mention this at the beginning, but again, when it's only one person doing the podcast, you get a little bit more discombobulated. Um, but I did want to say that Obviously, this episode is talking about living abroad and transitions and how to deal with feeling uncomfortable and all of that. And if you're listening to this and you're like, I've never lived abroad, I don't plan on ever living abroad, this is not relatable to me at all. I totally get that. And I think that's why I've kind of strayed away from talking too much about my lifestyle, because I understand that it can be pretty hard to relate to if you're not in a similar situation. But I think that there's so many pieces of this that can be relatable. Like I'm post-grad, so I'm dealing with trying to create adult friendships. I live with my significant other, so I'm dealing with not the struggles of that at all, but just the transition of that, like from going to like a college environment or like living at home with your family and then living with your significant other and moving away from home, whether that's a new country or just like a new state or, de you know, like there's, so I think there's pieces of this that I hope everybody can relate to, even if it's not like specifically the same situation. Um, but back to the transition of it, I think was just getting used to feeling uncomfortable all the time. And I know that sounds pretty harsh, but it is the reality that you do feel uncomfortable all the time when living abroad. And I think it's a, it's a uncomfortable feeling that you somewhat get used to and what i had to learn was just to embrace the uncomfortable that's the easiest way to say it and i think be comfortable with the uncomfortable and like almost look for it i think you grow the most in the situations when you're most uncomfortable because you don't have another choice um so that's really what i and nick have both really tried to do like and for example you feel uncomfortable because you're in and so let's use the example of even if you're in the same country, there's new, if you're moving to a different state in the same country, there's new cultures, there's new traditions, there's new people, there's new, everything is new, you know, like you're not like, it's not like you're living in your hometown anymore and you have the coffee shop you go to or everything is going to be new for you. So you just kind of have to, you don't know, kind of, you have to embrace it and just make new traditions and just be okay with feeling uncomfortable and you will learn to feel comfortable in the uncomfortable. Everything, I think there's a quote and I wish I could remember the exact quote, but it's something along the lines of like, the best days are the thing are, what is it? Like your biggest growth happens when you step outside your comfort zone, something along those lines. And that is so true. I think like mentally is not the right word, but individually I have gone, and I guess as a couple, but individually I've gone through so much growth since leaving my comfort zone which was my hometown and i'm so grateful that i had the opportunity i think i have grown so much confidence over the past year and a half and just like i never would have started dll if i was still living at home and it's nothing against my friends or family they are the most supportive people i know it's more that i think i was too stuck on like the judgment of like i grew up it was the same people from middle school high school college you know like i had to get out of that comfort zone and once I was already uncomfortable because of my environment, it allowed me to not even care about the fact that I was uncomfortable doing these things that were new and that scared me. And I think doing things that scare you, that's the way to grow. So yeah, that's, I think I, that my whole thing is like embracing the uncomfortable. I think it's just the best. And I think every other piece that I'm going to talk about here kind of goes back to that theme of embracing the uncomfortable. Um, I think the most important aspect of living abroad is finding a community and creating that community last year i feel really grateful that nick i feel grateful that living abroad wherever we are we have a community of the hockey team um, that always welcomes us in it's been 
Nick has been on two teams now um, that he's been in Italy. So this was his second year on this same team here in Murano and they have become family. They are the most welcoming people. They will help us with whatever we need help with. And they genuinely want you to feel included and want you to feel welcomed. And I know that we could turn to anybody if we need anything. And that's just such a, such a comforting feeling when you are so on your own and so like a, literally a fish out of water. Um, so creating family abroad, we definitely had that community aspect last year and I'm really grateful because I think it made the transition easier for me, probably easier for Nick as well. But then this year we really created community. We had a lot more uh, imports is the term in the hockey world or I guess any world, I don't know. We have a lot more imports on the team this year with um girlfriends wives families with them which makes a big difference i didn't realize what a difference it would make until we had it it wasn't i think because it wasn't something i ever knew i didn't know to miss it and then this year i feel really grateful for it because it's it's a community of people all living in the same sort of life like we're all from other places and we're thrown into this situation so we can really connect because it's like that shared not shared crisis by any means, but it's the shared environment of all feeling like fishes out of water. So I'm really grateful. We have such a community here that I absolutely consider family. And I know we would all do anything for each other. And it makes this place feel like home because of the people. I wrote down the people make the place. And that's another quote that I stand by. I think the people really do make the place. And you can, it's, it's one of those things that makes life feel a little bit more comfortable is being around people that feel like home um and even though these are people that we met in august or september they are home now to us and um i hope we're the same for them but yeah it, it makes a big difference so no matter where you are or what you're doing if you're experiencing a new phase of life where you're moving or switching jobs or whatever it may be get yourself out of your comfort zone and meet new people because i am super introverted and i think it's, it can be really hard for me to put myself out there. And I think that's something I've struggled with too, is I am so happy on my couch by myself with my book. Um, and I have to push myself. I notice that I have to like, kind of remind myself like, okay, like I know you could be happy spending the whole day alone if like Nick's at an away game, but like you have to put yourself out there. And every time I do put myself out there, I'm very happy. I'm like, okay, like, I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I came out and socialized and hung out with people and continued those bonds with people. But it's always hard for me to make that first step. Um, and I think that just stems from the fact that I definitely recharge my social batteries being alone. But I think it's also just a lot of like, past history of like my struggles with friendships and all of that, um, that I don't have to go into today. But um, yeah, working at those friendships and working at those community relationships makes such a big difference when you're in a new place. Um, and one of my other favorite quotes is kind is never wrong, which we actually turned into a sweatshirt collection, or I guess shirts too. So a whole little mini clothing collection last year when we still did clothing for DLL kind is never wrong actually stemmed from a group chat that I was put in with a bunch of the other hockey wives and girlfriends and they were all being very kind to me like asking if I wanted to go to a game with them and I didn't know how to respond I just felt very anxious about making sure I said the right thing and setting the right first impression and well what what if I should say this or what if and what if what if what if and I kind of stopped myself and I was like you know what is as long as I am kind I'm not doing anything wrong and that was where the phrase kind is never wrong was born and I was, I was kind, I, I, I can almost remember my exact response, um, but it worked out. One of the girls wanted to go to a game with me and that butted into a lovely friendship. And I think I've really worked very hard to try and carry on that mantra. And it's just being kind and being open and welcoming makes such a difference, especially in this phase of life. Um, and I wrote down, you have to put yourself out there, which is so true. And I think making an identity for yourself it can be really hard if you are in a situation where you are moving somewhere for your partner obviously i would not be in here in italy here in italy if it weren't for nick that's not to say i don't love being here in italy because i really do but i am here because of nick that's just the fact of it um but i think it's really important to make an identity for yourself and still do things for yourself um make like this is your life too even though you're here for your partner like you have a part in this. Um, and so I think for me, 
making sure I'm doing the things that fuel me apart from the things I do with Nick that like, I love doing things with Nick. I love going to Nick's hockey games. Like those are all things that like make me happy and add to my quality of life. But I also need to make sure I'm doing things for myself that are like my individual things and having those friendships help with that. Um, like obviously I'm friends with these girls because they also have significant others on the hockey teams or friends with some of the guys that are on the hockey teams, whatever. But just having those individual friendships that can work when my partner is there and then also when my partner is not there. Um, it can feel really, it can be really easy to feel proud of your partner, especially in a situation like this, but you should feel proud of yourself too. And that's something that I'm really grateful that my closest friends from home and my family often reminds me, like, look at what you're doing. And so like, don't forget to pat yourself on the back too, because like just the fact of choosing to leave your hometown and like, it, it is something that should be celebrated because um, it's not as easy and it's not always as glamorous as it might look online. Um, making routines for us and for yourself that make it feel like home, that's been something that was really helpful. I know the routines here in the hockey world can be so crazy. Like this week, there's back-to-back -back games. There's a game every other day, whereas in the off season, then there's no hockey. And it's like, okay, how do you still maintain routines when the hockey world is changing so quickly around you. But I think sticking to like Susan and I talk about this so often is like having your routines that you can just plop into place when you need to. And during those different phases, like I have a morning routine that I can do no matter what day it is, no matter what we're doing the rest of the day. And that morning routine makes me feel like I'm centered and that like I've had a good start to my day. Um, and also like little things to make it feel like home. like hang photographs. It doesn't even have to be a framed photograph. If you're worried about like moving the next year and you like us, like you don't want to, like we live in Italy, we can't move all of our picture frames and our blankets, you know, like the little things you wouldn't think you miss, you often do. Um, so moving what you can and then making it work when you're in that space, like printing photos or cooking meals that you remember from home, things like that make it feel like home. And then staying in contact with your friends and family. I feel so grateful that the friends, the, the best, like the people I would call my best friends when I was living in the States are still the people I call my best friends today. And I think people can easily assume that you lose touch with people when you go long distance. And I feel so grateful that that is not at all the case for me. I think my skills from doing long distance with Nick really helped because I was doing long distance with Nick and now I'm doing long distance with my friends and family. So it's not any easier <laughs> than it was when Nick was gone. Um, it's just different now. So I think the best advice I can give to maintaining long distance relationships is just to figure out what works for each person that you're away from. So for example, I have one friend who she's so busy um, and I'm so proud of her for being that busy and she's doing all these amazing things. But in order to stay in touch, we do voice memos because it gives us an opportunity to talk, which I think is so much better than texting because you can really hear emotion and you can just rant and talk for, honestly, they're usually like 10 to 15 minute long voice memos, but she can do it when she has time and then I can do it when I have time. So my routine is I usually listen to her memo right when I wake up. It's like my own little mini podcast and then I respond. And then at the end of her day, she listens and responds. So we rarely text, sometimes we do. And when we have that moment to like live catch up, it's wonderful, but most of the time it's memos and we stay so connected because that's what works for us. I have friends that I text from the beginning of the day till the end of the day. My best friend, it's literally nonstop and the conversation just continues. I feel like I'm right there with her. Obviously, would I rather be to be actually right there with her? Yes, but you make it work. I think you have to not live in the headspace of, oh, I wish it was like this. It's like, okay, well, it's not. So this is how it is and let's make it work the way it is. And I'm grateful that all my friends have been really understanding of like, wanting to make it work with what we have. Susan being right there included in that, we literally are able to run DLL being so far. And that's because of how understanding she is and how we all work together. You know, like if, if you have the common ground of wanting to 
if you want to stay in contact, you will. Like if you're both on the same page with that, you'll make it work. Um, I have scheduled calls with all three of my family members. I call my dad, my mom, and my brother at the same time on the same days every week. And that may sound kind of crazy. Like, why do you have to schedule a call with your parents? Like call whenever. And it's like, I would, yes, but we have a six hour time difference. Don't forget. So if I want to make it work to call them, I'm so type A, like I have to plan it out. And then I know like, okay, I will not schedule anything for Mondays at six because I have this call and it works. And it's, I never have to think in my head like, oh, it's been so long since I've talked to so-and-so because I know I have it all planned out. So for me, that's what works. I just recommend just sitting down and talking or (laughs) sitting on the phone and talking with your loved ones and saying like, okay, we need to make an effort to stay in touch. How can we make that happen? Um, And it's made the biggest difference. Like there's some quote that talks about like, we may be far in distance, but we're not far like where it counts. And I cannot relate more to that. Um, And I think the only other thing I wanted to talk about on this episode was just being humble. I think that goes really far. I think I used to be the type of person that would get very easily embarrassed about the smallest things. Like no matter like any sort of incon- any sort of mess up or mistake, or even if it wasn't a mess up or mistake, and it was just something that I did that someone wants to make fun of or correct me on, I would get so red in the face and be so embarrassed. And I would spiral and think about it and have so much anxiety over it. And I think that still, I still definitely spiral about some things more than I should. And that's like the anxiety side of things for me personally, but I have learned just let it go. And that's what my mom said. She goes, be like Elsa and let it go, which is so true. And I feel like I've gotten very comfortable with being embarrassed. And I think because of being in a foreign country, I don't really speak either of the languages spoken here. So I have to be, I have to just laugh it off when somebody says something in a language that I don't understand. And I have to politely ask them to switch to English. Or if I'm It's happened so many times that I'll be driving and there's construction and the construction workers are trying to explain to me what to do. And I genuinely don't know. And you can't let yourself get overworked about it. Like you can't let yourself get worked up about it because there's nothing you can do. Laugh it off, move on. People are so understanding of the person that's just humble and apologetic. Like, look, I'm sorry, I'm not from here. I don't speak the language, can you help me? And I think, being able to ask for help and showing that vulnerability of like, I don't know what to do, or I don't understand people really respond well to that. Um, so think about like what you would do. Like if you see someone that looks so confused, you would want to help them, you know, like, so do that for yourself and do that for other people. Um, and that's true. Like if there's people here that I can help or we can help in our community or even outside of the community, we always do. Cause it goes both ways. Um, you just have to expect to get things wrong. It's not, easy living abroad, living away from your family, living in a new place, living like any sort of change, especially post-grad. I think that could be, even if you're living in the same area, like post-grad, everything changes. Um, And especially it did for me with being in a foreign country, but you just have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I will leave it at that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know super different. Um, I hope you got something out of this. I hope it was interesting. We really, really, really would appreciate feedback. I know my best friend always sends me a voice memo the day of when we publish the podcast and she gives me the rundown. She tells me the good parts and the bad parts and everything in between. And I genuinely appreciate it so much because we can't improve if we don't know what we're doing wrong. So um, the email will be in the show notes. You can find us on Instagram, on TikTok, my personal Instagram or TikTok, Susan's personal Instagram or TikTok. So many different ways to contact us. And we really would love to hear what you like. Did you like this? Did you not? All the things. Um, so yeah, that's going to be all for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please give us a review, give us a rating. And we'll be back as normal next week with me and Susan. <laughs>